Steam Deck got a huge win over the last week. Actually, it's got two big wins between the Steam Hardware Survey and also how well Baldur's Gate 3 runs on the Steam Deck, not to mention how big of a phenomenon it's been on PC gaming in general. All that being said, I actually have to start with some breaking news. At the Expo over on Twitter actually just broke this news as I was writing this video. It looks like Valve is now getting ready to sell certified refurbished Steam Decks on Steam and the prices are looking really nice at effectively 20% off across the board for a refurbished Steam Deck. That means the 64 gigabyte is going to be available at $319, the 256 will be available at 419 and the 512 gigabyte will be $519. If you're up for replacing the storage, you can actually pick up your own 512 gigabyte SSD for like $60 and have a 512 gigabyte Steam Deck for under $400. Or if you prefer one terabyte, then you'd be spending less than 450 total. That's really impressive. And obviously I'm someone that thinks that's well worth the price. As I mentioned, this was discovered by the x on Twitter. He runs SteamDB, so he's been data mining Steam for a long time. In this case, he found actual product pages for these items. Interestingly, those pages have links to Steam's hardware refund policy, meaning it looks like the same policy applies to even these refurbished decks where you can return them or cancel your order as they say within 14 days of receiving the item. On the other hand, it's unclear if the hardware warranty is supported for a refurbished purchase. Hey everyone, I am interrupting myself to give you the update. So this has officially been announced now by Valve. Steam decks are now available for sale as certified refurbished Steam decks. The page is now up. You can see it on my screen. And like I said, it's 319 for 64 gigs, 419 for 256 gigs, and 519 for 512. But there's some important information that updates what I was just talking about with the one year warranty. So let's talk about it here. Certified refurbished, it says each certified refurbished Steam deck has been thoroughly tested to the same high standards as our retail units. Every device goes through a complete factory reset, software update, and an extensive examination involving over 100 tests at one of Valve's facilities. Among the tests are all controller inputs, the audio system, the screen, and internals. Battery health is also assessed to ensure proper functionality and longevity. All refurbished units meet or even exceed the performance standards of new retail units. Although they may have minor cosmetic blemishes, they provide a reliable, high quality gaming experience at a lower cost. And it says that these, all these certified refurbished Steam Decks include the same one year warranty as a new Steam Deck, unless longer as determined by your country of residence, a refurbished power supply, fully tested, may have minor cosmetic marks, and a carrying case and quick start guide. And the rest of this is just marketing. So it looks like these certified refurbished Steam Decks are in fact like new and the one year warranty does apply. So we are all set. I just wanted to give you that update. Now I can get back to the regularly programmed show. Let's do it. The last thing to note is that there probably isn't going to be much inventory for these certified refurbished Steam Decks. There never is a lot of inventory for refurbished products in my experience, but still, if you keep an eye on these, it should be a good chance to snag a deal on a Steam Deck. The fact that inventory exists at all seems to indicate that they have less and less of a need to use refurbished decks to replace damaged decks, perhaps because they're encountering fewer issues. More importantly, this actually presents something that's unique to the Steam Deck compared to other PC handhelds, but not when you compare to consoles, funny enough. As you know, console manufacturers sell at a loss, but only when the console first launches. Over time, the costs of manufacturing that console go down. That leads to them being able to put the console on sale or even a price reduction altogether, but it also leads to revisions of consoles like a slim PlayStation or a Switch OLED. The fact that Valve plans to stick with the Steam Deck for more than just one year means that they're able to take Take advantage of reduced costs of manufacturing. We've seen that with the Steam Deck going on sale a few times, and these certified refurbished decks may be more evidence of that. Given that, I wonder if we'll see any big revisions for the Steam Deck coming soon. Colorways would be nice, for example. Obviously, a lot of people have asked for a Steam Deck OLED. Anyway, maybe we'll see or hear something soon. Maybe we won't. As we know, Valve works on their own time. But now with that breaking news, let me get back to the big Steam Deck wins in the last week. 
Starting with the first of the two stories, you've probably heard by now about Linux overtaking macOS in a Steam hardware survey. That is incredible news, but in some ways, the story is actually bigger than that. First of all, this data comes from the Steam hardware survey, whose results get published monthly. Last week, we received the results for the month of July, and the data is kind of mind-blowing. GamingOnLinux.com has been tracking the growth of Linux for nearly five years since September 2018. If we look at the data up February of this year, Linux has had a pretty steady trajectory growing from 0.7% of the Steam user base up to 1.25% in four and a half years. That growth has been amazing to see and it can be directly attributed to the open source community, but also to Valve. Either internally or through contractors externally, Valve has been grooming Linux to be a gaming friendly platform for years now. It's an effort that's gone quietly appreciated by the Linux community in that time, but never really broke into the mainstream knowledge until the Steam Deck was announced. And naturally, with the Steam Deck's release, we've seen the Linux market share grow even bigger. Looking again at this year, from February to March, there was a big dip that was probably some sort of anomaly, and then March to April saw a regression to the mean. But then there was a big jump in May, which itself was later dwarfed by the jump in this last month. From June to July, Linux went from 1.44 to 1.96%, which is what caused it to leapfrog over macOS, who is currently sitting at 1.84%. My guess is that the big bump was caused by the Steam Deck discount during the summer sale, but I would caution that this month's data could also be an anomaly given how large the leap was. Still though, it also seems relatively inevitable, right? At this point, the trajectory of both macOS and Linux is clear, and even if Linux dips back under next month, it's only a matter of time before Linux consistently beats macOS. Nonetheless, something I find fascinating that I've pointed out before is that within Linux, SteamOS is not only the front runner, but it's close to 50% of the entire Linux market share. And again, it seems like only a matter of time until it reaches that number as well. This came up on the NerdNest podcast for this week, and Bill mentioned that he'd like to see Valve release general purpose SteamOS, and I absolutely agree. Many people are hesitant to try another flavor of Linux and just want the same exact experience they have on the Steam Deck. To be honest, it can never be the exact same, I imagine, but I do look forward to seeing a general purpose Steam OS release and seeing how that may impact Linux adoption. Personally, I'm looking into getting a mini PC and right now the only option I would consider is Chimera OS. Outside of that, I'm not terribly invested in installing Linux. One more thing I realized while looking at the Steam hardware survey is that we haven't seen AMD's Z1 Extreme show up in the survey. That is, of course, the chip that's being used in the ASUS ROG Ally, and last week I reported that the Ally should be closing in on close to half a million sales according to a leak that was reported on by RetroResolve.com. If that number is true, there should theoretically be enough of that CPU in circulation that we should see it show up on the Steam hardware survey in the coming months. I'll keep my eyes peeled to see what happens. And the other big W that the Steam Deck took this week was the release of Baldur's Gate 3. Of course, this was actually a big W for all of gaming, but it was nice to see that we got to partake portably on our handheld PCs. I've personally been playing on a non-deck handheld that I'm in the process of reviewing and the experience was wonderful. It can switch on the fly between a desktop based or a big screen based UI. So if I touch the touch screen, it would actually switch to the desktop UI. And when I touch the controls, it would switch back. For someone that's new to CRPGs like I am, the big screen UI was actually really, really nice and it tucked away the intimidating parts of a CRPG. A lot of people have been saying that Baldur's Gate 3 is really an uncompromising hardcore RPG. RPG, and I believe that's all true, but playing with this UI has made the onboarding process easy for a noob like me. There's also really good accessibility features like the ability to set the font size and a font background to make the text more readable. And then there's performance. I haven't actually run this on the Steam Deck yet because I've been running it on the other handheld and it's like a 110 gigabyte game, so yeah. But the performance seems really good so far, both from accounts of people playing it on the Steam Deck and from my experience on a 7840U at 15 watts. It just runs fairly well. You've probably seen by now that the split screen for this game was disabled on the Steam Deck. According to Plagman at Valve, you can actually run split screen on the Steam Deck if you use the Steam Deck equals zero launch option. 
This is pretty neat. I once asked Valve about implementing a feature like this and I didn't know they actually did it until now. My understanding is that the split screen doesn't perform very well on the Steam Deck, but yeah, that's not a surprise and it certainly explains why it was disabled for the Steam Deck. In any case, Baldur's Gate 3 has been quite the phenomenon. It's now become the ninth most concurrently played game on Steam of all time with over 800,000 players at the peak. The success is well deserved and I'm happy to see a game crush expectations like this. It's even now moved to the number one best selling pre-order on PSN in the US. It seems like the positive reception we've seen to the initial release on PC has got PlayStation owners excited about the upcoming console release. I'm very curious to see how people will receive it on a console, but like I said, I think it's been incredibly new friendly, especially considering it's a hardcore RPG, so I think it should do pretty well. I talked about big W's for the Steam Deck, but I guess I should talk about one L that PC Gaming took recently, a few weeks after the initial leak. The Red Dead Redemption port was officially announced, and it did leave some PC gamers confused. As of right now, it's only been announced for the PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch. Yeah, so if you want to play on the PS5, you'll have to do that through backwards compatibility. I suppose that's why no Xbox port was announced considering you can already play the 360 version on an Xbox Series console using backwards compatibility. Unfortunately, that means there's no redemption for the red-headed stepson, the PC. The original version is notorious for not getting a PC port and everyone including myself took the leaks to mean that we are finally getting a PC version and even now I'm pretty bewildered as to why a PC port has not been announced. There's still a good chance that it's coming later but this whole announcement seems really weird. We're still not very far removed from the bad remasters of the GTA trilogy so maybe this is just who Take Two is now. I should also point out that this port doesn't have the online multiplayer, but it does come with the Undead Nightmare expansion, so that's good news. I'm hoping to see a PC version at some point, otherwise I'll just keep emulating. There were some pretty big updates to the RLG Ally recently. Specifically, there was an update to Armory Crate SE and the microcontroller unit that added turbo functionality in the key mapping tool. Battery level, Wi-Fi status, and the system time have all been added to the command center. 5GB, 6GB, and 7GB have been added as options to memory that you can dedicate to the GPU. You can now navigate between tabs in the BIOS using the RB button, which is pretty cool, and there were a number of bug fixes. Overall, this is a pretty nice update for the Ally, and it's great to see Asus continuing to support their device. I've also seen a new site selling repair parts for the Ally. The site appears to be unauthorized and based in France, but they have inventory on quite a number of items. Honestly, I'm impressed. I've already praised the repairability of the Ally in previous videos, at least based on testimony from other folks, but that repairability is kind of useless if you can't source spare parts. Thankfully, this is at least one way to get those parts. Of course, being in France means that shipping can get pricey quickly if you're in the US like me. Hopefully a seller pops up in the States as well. Back to the Steam Deck, I talked quite a bit about how Baldur's Gate 3 was a huge success. It even entered the top 10 most concurrently played games of all time, like I mentioned. Well, Remnant 2 actually sold a million copies in one week, which was a big success as well. The only catch is it doesn't play well on the Steam Deck despite being verified. If you want to learn more about that, check out my last video over here. Deck Gang out. Goodbye.